الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شهر صدري ويسل لأمري وحل الأختة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a yet another exciting course from Team Sifia. This course content has been created under the guidance of Sheikh Mir Asadullah Qadri and I am a member of Team Sifia, going to be your trainer today. Together, you and I will go into this exciting journey of learning about this important concept of Sahih Iman. So, welcome aboard. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's parents, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, this course content is divided into the following lectures. Introduction It is in Quran and rely upon the exalted in might, the merciful, who sees you when you stand and you are turning over and over among those who prostrate themselves before Allah. Indeed, He is the hearing, the knowing. Ashwara 219 the meaning of the above verse is that Nur Muhammadi sallallahu alaihi wasallam transferred from one prostrating one to the next, proving that all forefathers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were Muslims. Thus, Nur Muhammadi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was transferred from Hadrat Adam alaihi salam and Hawa alaihi salam to all pious men and women till it illuminated in the person of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is in Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, I descend from the best people. My ancestors are the best people. Tirmidhi This course discusses in detail, in the light of Quran and Ahadith, that the parents of the Apostle of Allah ﷺ were Muslims. This is an important course for all Muslims of the world. It clarifies many of the doubts of people in the light of Quran and Ahadith. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is reported that Hadrat Ibrahim alayhi salam grew up under the guardianship of his uncle Azar, father's brother, because his father Tariq died when he was very young. It is in Quran, nay, where you witness when death visited Yaqub alayhi salam, when he said to his sons, What will you serve, worship after me? They said, We will serve, worship your God and the God of your fathers, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Ismail alayhi salam, and Isaac alayhi salam, one God only, and to him do we submit. Al-Bakhra 133 In the above verse, the sons of Yaqub alayhi salam are referring to both Isaac alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam as their fathers. Isaac alayhi salam is their grandfather, and Ismail alayhi salam is the brother of Isaac alayhi salam. Thus, it is proved that the word Abi is used in Quran for both biological father and brother of father. It is in Quran. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his father, Azar, do you take idols for gods? Surely I see you and your people in manifest error. Al-Anam 74 The literal meanings of this verse that comes to a reader's mind are Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his father whose name was Azar. But as per the rules of laconic usage, descriptive linguistics and rhetoric, this is a wrong understanding because it is mentioned that Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his father Azar which denotes different meanings. Like no one says my father Hussein is coming. We only say my father is coming. If we talk of a relationship and a name at the same time people will understand that there are more than one person associated with that relationship. If we have only one person associated with the relationship, like father, we will only say, my father is coming. Arabic word abi is commonly used for first biological father 
second stepfather and third brother of father like in indian subcontinent many children call their father papa and they call elder brother of their father abbu bade abba etc similarly in english language people use father to denote different relationships like father figure father of nation godfather grandfather etc if azar was the biological father of ibrahim alayhi salam it would have been enough to say he said to his father but the quran verse emphasizes ibrahim alayhi salam said to his father azar this shows that azar was not biological father of ibrahim alayhi salam it is in quran Ibrahim alayhi salam would not have asked forgiveness for his father but for a promise he made to him and when it became clear to him that he was an enemy of Allah he renounced it Ibrahim alayhi salam was tender hearted and forbearing At-Tawbah 114 Read the above verse carefully it says Ibrahim alayhi salam would not have asked forgiveness for his father but for a promise he made to him Remember We do not pray for our parents because we make a promise to them. We do it as mandatory and obligatory on us. We might make a promise to our relatives that we will do dua for them in a specific issue. Thus, the verse shows the relationship of Ibrahim alayhi salam with Azar was not that of son and biological father. Rather, it was the relationship between two relatives. He asked for forgiveness for his uncle Azar because he promised him once. But when Ibrahim alayhi salam realized that he was an idol worshipper and the enemy of Allah he renounced him It is in hadith Anas bin Malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that one day Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stood on the pulpit and informed sahaba the names of his ancestors The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Ana Muhammad ibn Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Abd Manaf bin Husayn bin Kilab bin murra bin kaab bin luwai bin ghalib bin fir bin malik bin annadr bin kinana bin khuzaima bin mudrika bin ilyas bin mudar bin nizar bin maad bin adnan bin udad bin ashab bin sale bin saluq bin hamisa bin nabad bin khizar bin ismail alayhi salam bin ibrahim alayhi salam bin tariq by haqqi hakim ahmad ibn khatir in bidaya ban nihaya and ibn asakir it is clear from the above hadith that the father of ibrahim alayhi salam was tariq a momin while his uncle azar was an idol worshipper it is in quran o our lord grant me protection and my parents and the believers on the day when the reckoning shall come to pass ibrahim 41 In the above verse Ibrahim alayhi salam is praying for protection for himself his both parents who were mu'minin and general believers on the day of judgment This Quranic verse shows Azar who was an idol worshipper was not the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari in his tafsir and history book has mentioned that Azar was not the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam History of Tabari volume 1 page 119 and tafsir at-tabari by ibn jarir al-tabari volume 7 page 158 ibn khatir has written in al-bidaya wan nihaya ibrahim alayhi salam was the son of tariq when tariq was 75 years old ibrahim alayhi salam was born to him al-bidaya wan nihaya volume 1 page 139 hadrat muhammad abdul qadir siddiqi rahmatullah alayhi has written in his tafsir as-siddiqi that azar was the brother of the father of ibrahim alayhi salam tafsir as-siddiqi all right this concludes the lecture take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning
ancestors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As we have described above, the statement of Allah that all ancestors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam consisted of prophets, salihin, and mu'minin from Hadrat Adam alaihi salam till Hadrat Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib radiyallahu taala anhu and Ummul Mu'minin Amina bint Wahab radiyallahu taala anha. It is in Quran. And you are turning over and over among those who prostrate themselves before Allah. Ashwara 219. The above Quranic verse testifies that all ancestors of Prophet Muhammad wasallam were Muslims of highest honor. Nur Muhammadi wasallam was transferred from Hadrat Adam salam and Hawa salam to all pious men and women till it illuminated in the person of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. First. It is in Hadith. Imam Tirmidhi has recorded a Hadith which he has classified as Hassan as well as Imam Bayhaqi from Abbas ibn Abd al-Muttalib that the Prophet said, When Allah created me, he made me from the best of creations. Then when he created the tribes, he made me from the best of tribes. And when he created souls, he made me from the best of souls. Then when he created households, he made me from the best of households. Thus, I am the best in terms of household and the best in terms of nufus. Second, it is in Hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah chose me among the distinguished people of Arabia. I descend from the best people. Tabrani. Third, it is in Hadith. Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhu narrated, I transferred you from the generation of one Prophet to the generation of another Prophet. If a father had two sons, the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam descended from the one that had the prophethood. Mawahib al dunya by Khastalani. Fourth, it is in Hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "None of my grandparents committed fornication. I descend from the best fathers and clean mothers. If one of my grandfathers had two sons, I descend from the better one." Mawahib al dunya by Khastalani. Fifth, it is in Hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, All of my ancestors beginning from Adam alayhi salam were married couples. I am the best of you in terms of ancestors. Dailami. Sixth, it is in Hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, I am the most honorable person among people. I am not saying it in order to boast. Dailami. Seventh, it is in Hadith. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ descend from the best men of each century. Bukhari. Eighth, it is in Hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah chose Kinana among the sons of Ismail salam, the Quraysh among the sons of Kinana, and sons of Hashim among the Quraysh, and He chose me among them. Muslim. Ninth, it is in Hadith. Suyuti reported in Al Jami Al Saghir on the authority of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet ﷺ said, I was born of the best and noblest lineage after lineage and nothing of the fornication of Jahiliya, pre-Islamic time of ignorance, touched my birth. Tabrani in Al-Awsat. Haitami said, the chain of narrators of this hadith have been authentic by Hakim. Tenth, it is in hadith. Abu Nuwaim writes in Dalail Al-Nubuwa with the chain of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah continued to transfer me from the loins of the pure to the wombs of the pure, clean and mannered. No two groups have appeared except I was the best of the two. 11th, it is in Hadith. Imam Tabrani writes in Awsat and Imam Bayhaqi in Dalail from Ummul Mumineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel ﷺ said to me, I have searched the earth, the easts and wests, and I did not find a man better than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I did not find a clan better than the clan of Bani Hashim. Twelfth, it is in Quran: "O you who believe, the idolaters are nothing but unclean." At Tawbah 28. Thirteen, it is reported that before the fall of Makkah, Abu Sufyan, who had not accepted Islam then, went to visit Ummul Mu'mineen Ummeh Habiba radiallahu ta'ala anha who was his daughter. He wanted to sit down on the bedding of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. 
But Umm Habiba radiallahu ta'ala anha did not allow her father to sit on it as he was an unbeliever. She said, you are a polytheist and hence unclean and this is a pure clean bedding of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. All Quranic verses and ahadith mentioned above confirm the fact that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's grandfather Hadrat Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his father Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and all his ancestors till Adam alayhi salam were either prophets or among the pious of highest order. Scholars' Opinions Opinions of some Islamic scholars are mentioned below in this context. First, Jalal al-Din Suyuti in his book Masalat al-Hunafa wrote, The proof is based on two elements. Firstly, it is proven from authentic ahadith that from the time of Adam alayhi salam to Hadrat Abdullah ta'ala anhu, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's father, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's lineage were the best people. No one was better than his lineage in any generation. Secondly, it is proven from a hadith that from the time of Adam alayhi salam up till the time of Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there was no period in which at least some people of fitra existed who worshipped Allah, performed salah for him and thus through their means and blessings the earth was preserved from destruction. If it was not for them, the earth and all above it would have perished. Thus, the forefathers of the Prophet ﷺ were all monotheists and believers and were the best of their generations. Second, Hadith scholar Abdul Raza wrote in Al Musannaf from the chain of Mamar, from Ibn Juraij, from Ibn Al Musayyab, that Ali ibn Abu Talib ta'ala anhu said, the earth has continuously been occupied with at least seven Muslims or more. If this was not the case, the earth and its inhabitants would have perished. The chain of the above narration is authentic, sahih, according to the conditions set by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. And though it is saying of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we assume he must have heard it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Third, Ibn al-Munzir has mentioned in his exegesis with a sound chain from Ibn Juraj in the commentary of the verse, O Allah, make me Ibrahim alayhi salam, one who establishes regular prayer and also raise such among my offspring. O my Lord, and accept thou my prayer. Ibrahim 40. He said, there has remained from the offspring of Ibrahim alayhi salam to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam people on fitra who have worshipped Allah. Alright, this concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. What is Fitra and who are the people of Fitra? Some scholars say that Prophet Muhammad wasallam's parents and close ancestors are the people of Fitra. What is Fitra? Fitra is an Arabic word which means natural disposition. Human beings are born with an innate inclination towards Tawheed, oneness of God, which is inbuilt in their Fitra, nature, along with intelligence and all other attributes that are required to be human. In the context of our discussion, 
the people of Fitra can be divided into following three major categories. First, the people through their own natural disposition and enlightened insight were able to deduce the oneness of Allah. Second, people who diverted from the religion of Ibrahim and began worshipping idols like Makkan pagans. Such people are destined for hellfire. Third, in view of lack of knowledge and disregard, some people refrained from accepting other beliefs and remained firm on monotheism. They did not indulge in polytheism or idol worship. They are the people who fall under the verse, and we do not torment until we send a prophet. Al-Isra 15 Some scholars say that Prophet ﷺ's parents belong to the third category of fitrah. No prophet was sent to them from the time of Ismail Salam up till the official announcement of prophethood of Muhammad Wasallam, nor did they perform any act associated with disbelief or polytheism. Therefore, their salvation is a certainty. Some other scholars say that Allah resurrected Prophet Wasallam's parents after their deaths and they confirmed faith in him. This way, they have been saved. This opinion is held by Ibn Shahin, Abu Bakr al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, Soheli, Qurtubi, Muhib Tabri, Nasir al-Din, Ibn al-Munzir, etc. However, it is established in the light of Quran and Ahadith that all ancestors of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, from Adam alayhi salam till Hadrat Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu were either prophets or virtuous mumini and were best among their people. Therefore, they are the recipients of unlimited bounties in hereafter. We consider it a grave sin even to discuss about their iman or salvation. Correct understanding of a hadith. It is in hadith narrated Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that a man said, O apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where is my father? He said, in hell. When he turned away, he called him back and said, my father and your father are in hell. Muslim. Salafis, Diobandis and their like-minded groups mislead Muslims by citing the above hadith. If you take literal meanings of the hadith, you will have to deny many authentic ahadith and Quranic verses mentioned above. We have proved in the light of Quran and ahadith that the word abi is used in Arabic for both father and the brother of the father. In the above hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is consoling the person that the person's father and the Prophet ﷺ's uncle both are in hell. It is in Quran, Nay, were you witness when death visited Yaqub ﷺ, when he said to his sons, What will you serve? Worship after me? They said, We will serve, worship your God and the God of your fathers, Ibrahim ﷺ and Ismail ﷺ and Isaac ﷺ, one God only. And to him do we submit. Al-Bakhra 133 In the above verse, the sons of Yaqub are referring to both Isaac and Ismail as their fathers. Isaac is their grandfather and Ismail is the brother of Isaac. Thus, it is proved that the word Abi is used in Quran for both biological father and brother of father. It is in Hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I sought permission to beg forgiveness for my mother, but it was not granted since there was no need for it as she is the pious mother of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa already under Allah's protection and mercy. Then I sought permission to visit her grave which was granted encouragingly. Muslim Book 11 Hadith number 134 Salafis, Diobandis and their like-minded groups cite the above hadith to claim that Mazallah, Astaghfirullah, Prophet Wasallam's mother is in hell. Read the following Quranic verse to understand the correct meaning of this hadith. It is in Quran And never, O Prophet Wasallam, pray funeral prayer for any one of them that dies nor stand at his grave. Certainly, they disbelieved in Allah and his apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam and died in a state of rebellion at tauba 84 the above quranic verse is clearly commanding the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
never to pray funeral prayer or stand by the grave of disbelievers. Thus, the correct understanding of the above hadith is, when Prophet ﷺ wanted to ask for forgiveness for his mother, Allah does not grant it because she is the virtuous mother of the seal of prophethood and one among the best of women among human beings, who has been rewarded plentiful bounties in hereafter. Therefore, there is no need to ask for her forgiveness. Forgiveness is requested for a sinner whose salvation is under scrutiny. As far as the permission to visit her grave is concerned, this is granted to the Prophet ﷺ because visiting the graves of Prophets, Sahaba and Muslimin is a virtuous deed in Islam. From the above Hadith and Quranic verse, two issues are understood as follows. First, we should not visit the graves of non-believers. Second, and when we visit the graves of Sahaba, Imams or Awliya Allah, we should not pray for their forgiveness or salvation because they are the favorites of Allah. Rather, we should request them to pray for our forgiveness and salvation. It is in Hadith related by Al-Hakim in Mustadra from Ibn Masood anhu, and graded authentic from a young man of the Ansar who asked a lot of questions. Once asked the Prophet wasallam, Are your parents in the fire? To which the Prophet wasallam answered, My Lord promised to give me what I asked concerning them and on that day I shall stand at the praiseworthy station of Chief Intercessor, Hakim. It is in Quran, and your Lord shall give you, so that you will be pleased. ad doha 5 The meaning of Al-Hakim's narration is, Allah will reward uncountable bounties to the parents of Prophet Muhammad wasallam on the Day of Judgment. There is no doubt in it. And that is what the Prophet wasallam is emphasizing in the above hadith. Alright, this concludes the lecture. Before you go, you can find more information of many other Islamic topics like the one we discussed in this course at sahiiman.com slash books. Hundreds of books available explaining multiple Islamic topics up for grabs for free. So do check it out. Thank you for signing up for this course. We hope you had a great time learning about this important topic as we had preparing this course for you. See you again for another exciting learning experience at the Correct Islamic Faith International Academy. Until then, it's goodbye from us at Team Sifia.